runs deep, it spans generations, passed down from father to son, a rivalry born even before their foray into boxing. In the early 1970s, Frank and Eddie Hearn's father, Barry, butted heads in business, delivering pool tables and machines into pubs across the capital, and it only got bigger from there. From there, with the help of their sons, of course, Eddie, grew into the biggest and most recognisable boxing promotional outfits this country has ever seen. With Matrim Boxing in Queensbury promoting some of the biggest fighters throughout their careers, biggest names in the sport, such as Nigel Benn, Ricky Hatton, Prince Nassim Hamed, Canelo, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, just to name a few. This rivalry no doubtably grew and grew and grew and potentially can be settled when they pit their best, all thanks to the visionary ideas of His Excellency, Turkey El Al Sheikh. Now, before we get into it, I want to break down some of the rules of this 5v5 because we have a bespoke set. Now, both Frank and Eddie had the chance to pick two weight divisions each for their fighters to be contested in. And the final weight category was picked by His Excellency, Turkey El Al Sheikh. Now, we're going to find out very, very soon who will be representing Team Matram and Team Queensbury. Now, the rules are a little bit different here. We're going to get one point for a decision win. We're going to get two points for a ref stoppage or TKO. A draw is no points. And as a kicker, both captains' scores will be doubled. And Eddie and Frank are going to pick their captains, so it's better to go for broke. Now I've done enough speaking, I think it's time to hand over to our MC for the day, Dev Sarni, to introduce some of these fighters. Okay, if the fighters can please come and take their seats. You're going to enjoy this, ladies and gentlemen. There's something very special about what we're about to see. Never been seen before. The fighters will now come up here and take their seats. season original and original is definitely the word that comes to mind this could be a movie now I think it's time Dev to bring in the two men their head honchos why this fight is happening you can see them behind me I think it's time to bring them in right I agree Josh I think it's time it is now time to welcome to the stage the man with perhaps the loudest mouth in boxing you may recognize him from the front cover of Men's Health magazine or from the 400 YouTube interviews a day proudly representing Brentwood Essex please welcome the chairman of Matchroom Boxing Mr. Eddie you're looking very smug, Eddie. Confident. All right, now let's welcome to the stage the Hall of Fame boxing promoter who has spent over 40 years promoting the biggest stars and fight nights in the UK. You may know him for his no-nonsense approach and he may have even asked you to do him a favour. Proudly representing Islington, London, please welcome the chairman of Queensbury Promotions, Mr. Frank Warren! The governor's in town. Where did it start? Well, I mean, many decades ago. You know, you were talking about fruit machines and billiard halls. I mean, even before they were recognised names, there was almost a rivalry. Even growing up as a kid, 9, 10, 11 years old, I'd hear the name in the house. It wasn't always the <laughs> most pleasant conversation, but they were on the phone arguing and they were rivals. And I think the rivalry has been great for British boxing. You know, it's enabled the sport to grow. And, you know, Frank, same as my old man, same as me, we like to win. 
and we don't like anyone else to win. <laughs> and, you know, it, it is actually quite remarkable as we talk every week and we meet multiple times with His Excellency that it has actually taken this long yeah. for us to work together or even to speak. I mean, you're talking about 13 or 14 years where we never spoke. And it's not good for the sport of boxing. The rivalry is good. The competition's good. But now we take it to another level with events like this. And, you know, um, people talk about coming together for financial gain. Of course, we're running a business. But we come together because of the vision of His Excellency, who basically slapped us both around the ear and said, what on earth are you doing? Because he couldn't quite understand why you wouldn't want to make the biggest fights. Why wouldn't the two biggest promoters in the world want to work together and give fans the matchup? Now we've got the rivalry, the team concept. I mean, I went backstage, I bumped into this lot. They were going to lynch me. <laughs> I mean, this is serious. We have to win. And although we're friends now, we're not really. I wanted to absolutely destroy Queensbury on June the 1st. As I said, and we will be there on the night, you know, beating our chests, willing our guys on. And these are massive fights for our guys. You've got world championships, you've got huge heavyweight dust-ups, you've got big domestic fights, you've got career defining and ending fights. And one thing that I know that we do share in common is we love our fighters mm -hmm. and we want them to win desperately. And uh, this fight I've got here, I'm very confident we'll do the business in Riyadh. Fighting words early on in the presser. Think was it the same for you? Was the was the her name? He shall, shall not be named. Or was it, it, it? Was it always that deep? We were partners for a while. We did a breakaway snooker thing, um, Barry and myself, many many years ago. And uh, so very briefly, we were partners. And I, we did actually speak quite a few times over the fourteen years. I got to be honest. Those calls you were getting in the middle of the night. They were <laughs> no, we. Uh, this is you know. There is a natural rivalry, we get that. We both love the sport, we both want to win because, we're, as Eddie says, we're competitive. We both feel for our fighters. We pick the team, the weights and the teams that we feel will make sure that will happen. And through His Excellency, you know, so much has happened since October, since that first fight in October with Tyson and Nagano. And I said it would be a game changer and I underestimated that. It's been a double game changer. It's been nothing like this. And this is a Riyadh season original on the 1st of June. This is something, you know, things like this. Well, I can't even remember any, anything like this ever happening in boxing. So I think this will be the first of, hopefully, be the first of many of these encounters. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure Eddie will want another one, you know, for a, a rematch to try and get his own back after we wipe the floor with him. But this is going to be something special. It's going, to be a, a, it's going to be a fabulous night's boxing on a card that has four belts on the line. Four belts on the line. Two undefeated fighters that we just spoke about in the previous contest. And this, I mean, don't get any better. You're a fight fan. You're in fight heaven. This is something that, you, you know, well, people will talk about in years to come. And we want to win it. Eddie's team want to win it. His fighters want to win it. We want to win it. We're all competitive. Everyone's competitive. You know why? Because it's called the fight game. There's winners and losers. And we are not and don't want to be the losers. Everything's on the line here. So June 1st, watch it because you're going to see something extra, extra special. Frank, it didn't feel that long ago, Eddie, that we were on this very stage and we were talking about a completely different fight and then... His Excellency had a visionary idea of putting you two against each other, head to head, picking your best, almost like schoolyard rules. Did you ever believe that it would actually happen? Once His Excellency said it was going to happen, it was going to happen. Because everything he says he's, he wants to do with his vision and paves the way for us to go, and that, go out and then make it happen. But yeah, he says it's going to happen. I'm telling you, it will happen. What would it mean for you to win this, Eddie? It's only winning. I mean, everything else. I mean, people talk about taking part. Couldn't be more irrelevant. Winning. It's the only thing that matters in sport, in life. And as Frank said, this is the fight game, the greatest sport in the world. And, you know, we're all very lucky to be working in a period now where these events are happening. And these fighters as well. 
you know, I want to thank, of course, Seller and, and His Excellency and the team who not just make the fights happen, make the event happen, make the promo happen. I think shortly you will see one of the best promos I've ever seen. These five have already been out to Bulgaria on a Hollywood film set having an experience of a lifetime. And this is what it is. It's big time boxing. It's putting boxing on the map with the major sports in the world. The purest, most beautiful, greatest sport of all is professional boxing. And now it's getting the attention it deserves and the fans are getting the big fights and the big nights they've craved for a long time. Frank, would you echo Eddie's sentiment, sir? Every word of it. See, we agree. <laughs> Every word of it. I mean, it's, this, this is... You know, this, for me, I've been doing this now for 47 years, and I can't tell you how it, you know, how it makes you feel to be involved in this. It's like life-changing, and it's just so brilliant. And it's getting bigger and bigger. It's like this snowball coming down the hill. It's rolling down, and it's unstoppable. And event after event after event gets bigger and bigger and better. And here we are now, hopefully the first of our rivalry. And who knows, we may join ourselves together and fight somebody from the States or another part of the world. Who knows how we do this? But this is, this is magnificent for boxing. It's magnificent for the fans. They're getting what they want. Evenly matched fights, unifications. I mean, it's all happening. It's all happening in Riyadh. It's all part of the Riyadh season, and it's just been so phenomenal. And game-changing, and I'm going to repeat myself, I underestimate that in a big way. This has changed everything, everything about boxing. There we go. Now, this is where we're all here for. Dev, I think it's time that we find out who exactly is behind these masks. I think it's time, Josh. Well, Frank Warren has picked the heavyweight division. Would Frank Warren's heavyweight pick please take off their mask? Whoa, dangerous there. Well, he's a native of Greenwich, London, England. He has an outstanding record of 20 wins, only two defeats, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former British Commonwealth and WBA regular heavyweight champion, Triple D, Daniel Dynamite Dubois. OK, well, we've got Daniel Dubois in one corner. Will the matchroom heavyweight pick please remove his mask? Oh, he's a native of Zagreb, Croatia. He's unbeaten with a record of 17 wins and no defeats, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Olympic bronze medalist and IBF mandatory challenger, Philippe El Animal Hardgavich. What a fight, eh? That is a great heavyweight fight. What a fight. I think, um, actually, I've become a little bit of a fan of a few Queensbury fighters being part of these shows. Nick Ball, one of them, robbed last time out to become world champion. We, we haven't announced Nick Ball yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm just a fan of him. I don't know what, what you're going on about. I don't know what you had to say that. But um, in terms of Daniel recover, Dubois, recover. A, a real character and uh, a great fighter. However, this man we've been working with for a number of years now, and um, in my opinion, this is an elite heavyweight in Filip Hergovic, a guy who is on the verge of becoming world champion. We'll see what happens with the belts. We know there's a potential carrot for the winner of this fight in a massive fight, whoever that may be, but what a heavyweight matchup, Filip Hergovic against Daniel Dubois. Great matchup, and of course, one nil to match him. Well, Eddie Hearn has picked the featherweight matron. <laughs> Eddie Hearn has picked the featherweight division. There is no guarantee it's anyone that's already been named. Will the matchroom featherweight please now take their mask off? He is a native of Camden, New Jersey, USA. An outstanding record of 15 wins, no defeats with one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the reigning, defending WBA World Fellowweight Champion, 
Raymond Savage Ford. And now it's time for the Queensbury featherweight to remove his mask again. We don't know who it is. Please remove your mask. Oh, well, he is a native of Liverpool, England, an outstanding record of 19 wins, no defeats with one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former WBC Silver featherweight champion, Nick the Wrecking Ball. Okay, let's continue now. Promoter Frank Warren has picked the middleweight division. Will the Queensbury middleweight please remove their mask? He's a native of Ilford, London, England, unbeaten with a record of 19 wins and no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the reigning Commonwealth and WBC silver middleweight champion... Hamza Shiraz! Okay, it's now time for his opponent on June 1st. We ask the matchroom middleweight to please remove your mask. Well, here's a native of Houston, Texas, USA, unbeaten with a record of 16 wins, no defeats. Introducing the former standout amateur sensation and reigning IBF North American middleweight champion, Austin Amo Williams. Okay, well, promoter Eddie Hearn has selected the light heavyweight division. Will the matchroom light heavyweight please remove your mask? He's a native of Crystal Palace, London, England. An outstanding record of 18 wins, three defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Craig Spider Richards. Let's meet his June 1st opponent. Will the Queensbury light heavyweight please remove your mask? <laughs> he is a native of Carstair, Scotland. An outstanding record of 17 wins with only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former world amateur champion, Willie the Hutch Train Hutchinson. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the final pick, His Excellency has chosen for there to be another fight in the marquee division of boxing in the heavyweight division. Will the Queensbury pick please remove your mask? Well, he's a native of Shinshan, China, now fighting out of Bloomfield, New Jersey, USA. A record of 26 wins, two defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Gilet Big Bang Zhang. <laughs> Okay, the final pick will now be unveiled. Will the matchroom heavyweight pick please remove your mask? He is a native of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, USA. He brings to the stage an incredible record, 43 wins, only three defeats and one draw, with an incredible 42 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former long-reigning WBC World Heavyweight Champion, the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder! Eddie, I've got to start with you. I, I didn't see that one coming. Can we talk about Deontay Wilder? I think in football, that's what we call a super sub. 
super sub indeed. Um, His Excellency said for the, the wild card pick, we could find the best fighter we could. I looked at the heavyweights available. I think this man has long been one of the most dangerous punchers in the division. Coming off a defeat, I think he's going to come back more dangerous than ever. And, you know, when we spoke to Shelley and the team and Deontay, this was the obvious pick to make. Deontay Wilder against Zilei Zhang is a massive, massive heavyweight fight between two punches. And uh, we'll see what the future holds. But for one night only, we work together. And I believe this man's going to make a real statement and get back on the heavyweight scene and uh, produce an epic performance in Riyadh. Well, if you're going to bring in a ringer, that's one way to do it, Eddie. Now, Frank, now you've seen the boys up close and personal on the same stage, you, you're confident? Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm a fan of all the guys. They're a good, he's got a very, very good and strong team now. But we've got belief in our guys. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am looking forward to it. This is, this is, this is going to be spectacular. Uh, there's so much, so much at stake. And I know that, I know that Deontay, for example, looking at him, he knows what, how important this fight is to him. His career's on the line. And it's the same with Zillay. This fight is a big, big match for them. The winner of this goes to back to the top table. So everything's on the line. That's the competition. That's the, how competitive that fight's going to be. Listen, before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, I'm going to come to each fight, get a quick word of how they feel about their matchup. Daniel, I'm going to start with you. You feeling confident? You look over there to the far side. Filip Hergovic, it's a big fight. Very, very confident, you know, working hard. And, and I'm just ready to prove, you know. We had a spa a while back and he keeps talking about that. So I'm going to just show him that people change, and you know. I'm, I'm a different animal now. Fighting words. Philip, how do you respond to that? I hope so he changed, because if he didn't change it, it would last a few rounds only. So I hope so he changed, man. Uh, that sparring wasn't go- good for him. So I hope so he changed. And we can, we can save those fine words for when we really go hammer and song it. It's a bit later on in the day. Craig, good to see you. You know who you're up against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good seeing you. Lads, stay obviously. Thank God. Thank Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing, uh, Frank Smith, and He Excellency for putting me on the show. I'm excited and can't wait. Hey. Nick, what's going on? Hello, lad. Good to see you again. You happy with your music this time? Yeah, yeah. That's a man. <laughs> Listen, last time out, it was very, very close. You're up against another dangerous opponent. Confident? You're going to get put some points on the board for Team Queensbury? Yeah, always confident. And it's another massive opportunity to me. for me, thanks to uh, His Excellency and Frank for getting me the opportunity. So, looking forward to uh, the final, yeah? Right. How would you respond? 5-0. That's all I can say. Um, I'm going for the knockout, though. Nice and easy. Amo Williams? The next U.S. star, they're saying, in Eddie Hearn's stable. Now, you're in the U.K. We're going to be fighting in Saudi. How are you feeling? The glasses are saying you're a superstar. you got to win with them on. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. First, I just want to give thanks to everybody involved. This, is, this event is massive. It's massive. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody involved in making it happen. I'm so ready to showcase my skill. I'm so ready to showcase all the investment, all the fights, everything that we've done together, me and Eddie Hearn, and it will shine through in Saudi Arabia June 1st. Don't miss it. Hamza, I seem to see you at every fight. You're a busy man, always looking suave. Yep. Yeah, now, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Imai Allah for allowing me to be here today. I'd like to thank His Excellency uh, Turkey Al Sheikh for for making it happen, like the Frank Ricky, my team, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready. June the first, it's going to be a going to be a Queensbury win for sure. Willie, you can just about see Greg down there. How are you feeling? I can't see him. We we'll take a step back. Willie, mate, you can look in his eyes. Hello. What's <laughs> going on? You good? Good, good, good. Very good. Perfect. You look confident. Every every fight, every interview I see, you're buzzing. Oh. Still that confidence today. Yeah, I'm buzzing. Um, obviously, thank you very much for the the prince, the uh, shake, for giving me and Frank and everyone giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, and I'm as confident as I'm confidence is through the roof. 
I'm looking forward to getting in with this fella and having a good time and uh, enjoying myself. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting in the ring now. Um, I don't know if it was a good idea you giving me this mic, you know. I know. Listen, we've only got I, a short I, amount of time. I would, stay, to show you. I would stay for two hours. If we listen, you still you get your opportunity. You know what? I'll come back to you a little bit later. But now, before we speak to the two giants here on the stage, I got a sneak peek of it yesterday, and I'm telling you, the acting skills are incredible. You will not see promo like this ever. The levels keep on rising. Enough talking from me. I think we run the promo. <laughs> see anything like that incredible promo because i think you should get imdmb credits if you uh <laughs> listen if you do enough one of them i'm serious it could be a career that was just an incredible experience we, we were filming for about six hours on that table and as i said all of these fighters flew out to bulgaria for a couple of days and, and i just want to you know and i know we're all forever thanking his excellency but thank you not just for making the fights but the vision for boxing and allowing these fighters to express themselves and showcase their personality and their stories. And I know every one of these guys absolutely loved it. And um, it's, it's, how you, it's how you spin a narrative. It's how you tell a story that gets people excited. And um, that was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I, you know, I thought Frank was very good. I was sensational, but you know. <laughs> it never stops. A career change for any of you boys on this table? Slightly easier acting than doing what you do. They're not going to give up their day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the scenes of everything, I like to thank uh, Frank, Warren Queensberry, Eddie Hearns, <laughs> Matchroom um, Promotion. Nobody ever thought with me, me and old Eddie would be working <laughs> together. So this is an ultimate surprise right here. And like Eddie said to to Frank, you know, it's a shame that we can't work together. In, 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 in the business of boxing, this is what it's all about. The best fighting, the best, the best promoter going against the best promoters, the putting fighters together. And I love the scenery. I love how your excellency, you know, Turkey come in and his staff and they rearrange and change the way boxing is, 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 is promoted and done. And, um, I'm looking for that acting career after. <laughs> you don't have to get hit. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm looking forward to the fight. You know what I'm saying? I respect Zane. He's a good fighter. And um, and I respect him for that. But it's my time, you know. I've been, I've been through a lot. You understand me? And I've had to regroup. I've had to get myself together. And things just don't change overnight. Things don't change for the next fight or so. You have to keep working. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep working. You have to keep pushing, keep working, keep pushing until you get what you want. And I'm at this point in time where I'm narrowing it down. And come, come the night of the fight, we'll see if I got it or not. This fight, I'm holding it as my last stance, my last chance. You know, and that's what I'm taking it. Uh, accordingly as you know and i'm just ready to do what i what i what i've what i've known to do you understand to be the wilder that i am you know i lost my love and and the passion for this business i lost my hunger hmm. for so many different reasons you know but now i'm in an opportunity where i'm dealing with people that love the craziness, the love, uh, the wildness of Wilder, the love that Wilder that said he want a body on his record, Wilder. And it's amazing to be around people that appreciate what they see in front of them. It's amazing to be, you know, you know tied into people that love what we, what we do. People don't understand what we do and how we have to do it and get to, get to that point. This is not an easy task that we do. Boxing is, is, it's straight, strictly a business. It's not a sport for me. I always say the business of boxing, and that's what it is. Accordingly, we risk our lives for you guys entertainment, and here I am again. <laughs> I'm not playing around this time. I have nothing to lose. I feel like I've lost a lot of things in my life, even some of the closest people in my life. So I don't feel like I have nothing else to lose, but only to gain. In this fight, we're going to tell, we're going to see. It's enough of the talking. I even told my team, I don't want to hear how good I look, how I am, this, and this. 
I'm not going to even be posting too much this time around because I mean business. I can feel the desire and the sensation in my heart again. That hunger, that monster, that beast is coming back. The pain that I've endured over these last years, it's going to be, it's, 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 you'll see what I'm talking about comes the night of the fight. So good luck to all and, uh, and to all a good night. Strong, strong words there from Deontay. You can see it means a lot. And the man that's going to be on the other end of that pain that Deontay is channeling is Zile Zhang. Zhang, you're representing, you're his excellency's pick. You're representing Team Queensbury. You're up against one of the most destructive punchers in the division. You are one of the most destructive punchers in the division. You're looking to end this one early. 在经历过这一番陈词之后啊，你觉得在比赛当天你有机会提前终结这个比赛吗？啊，首先在这来到伦敦，感谢艾斯艾斯克隆斯，感谢昆德贝里，感谢奥尔伦，再一次让我站到世